here in the Wonderman Thompson offices in London to hear all about one of their latest products, Shelf Master. We're going to be chatting to Dennis to get all the details. Let's go find him. Shoppers are always looking for inspiration. They search online, read reviews, compare prices, and watch how-to videos on social. They can do all of this within minutes, moving across various channels thanks to easy access to brands and products online. But this leaves brands with a challenge. How do they ensure that they are constantly visible on this digital shelf and therefore stay top of mind? Today, I'm joined by Wonderman Thompson, business lead for product information management, Dennis Peake, to discuss this challenge and delve into some of the solutions that are helping household names win on the digital shelf. Welcome, Dennis. Thank you for having me. Amazing. So I mentioned this concept of the digital shelf in my introduction. And before we sort of dive headlong into talking solutions, can you explain what this is and why it's becoming so important for brands to invest in this area? Absolutely. The digital shelf is actually the online equivalent of a physical brick and mortar retail, retail aisle that we all know and where we all shop for, for all of our household. Um, if you compare online and offline, we are so used to grabbing the products that we need from a physical, physical shelf and all the information about products is right there on the label and we know how to use that, we know how to find our products. If you compare that to online and people are shopping more and more online and over the last two or three years it grew obviously because of COVID, uh, more than double digit growth we've seen in brands selling online and, and consumers have the same questions when they're shopping. But the amount of products that are for sale on marketplaces and online retail stores is, is, is much bigger than if you compare it to a, to a physical retail aisle. Um, for instance, if you're shopping for a chocolate bar, if you go to any given department or convenience store, um, you can maybe find a hundred variations of that same product. Um, if you do a, a Google search or uh, an Amazon search on, on chocolate, you may find more than 10,000 of variations. So there's much more competition. So for brands, it's very important to speed up that, uh, that ability. And one of the foundational ways to do that is to have great product content and to really stand out. And that's the difference between the physical retail experience and the online retail experience. So you mentioned, of course, shopping online. We all shop online. And of course, we see big differences in how products are presented and the information that's provided about those products. Why is it important for brands to get this right? You know, what impact does that have on the you know, customer experience and then, of course, on sales? Well, imagine that you're going to this online shop. You still have the same questions that you do have uh, in, in a physical environment. Um, and online, it's much difficult, more difficult to find the products that you're looking for. So for instance, that same chocolate bar we were discussing, people, if you are, they're going to an online store, they're using the search bar or they're using a Google search. Um, and then after having done that first query, they're using uh, the, the filtering options. So imagine that customers are looking for information and, and product information is not accurate and not there. It's, it's very hard to find uh, the information that you're looking for. And even if, even if you've done that, uh, consumers want to validate that they're actually buying the right product and, uh, and not uh, buying the wrong product. Um, so there's a lot more data and a lot more content that, uh, that they're yeah, uh, now using that they would have done uh, in the old days when they're just looking at the label. So let's talk solutions. You're obviously in the business of helping clients fix this problem. What technologies and solutions are out there? Well, I think fundamentally what's very important is that companies like, for instance, brand manufacturers uh, are starting to work on great, compelling product content. Um, and content these days is living in all kinds of pockets in organizations. All departments are actually working on content. Uh, the problem is, is they're not collectively working on it together. Uh, so our advice is obviously to, to use something like a product information management tool to start working on one single source of the truth for product content uh, and start collaborating across functions in the organization. Because once you have a, a clear definition of what your product is, then it can be easily replicated and syndicated to, to, to customers. Um, so fundamentally, I think that's, that's a very big step to take first. Um, and, uh, and that's some, something of the tools that, uh, yeah, that com customers really should invest in. And second, I think you should invest in the people uh, to do really the work. Um, because, because, yeah, people are changing their habits and also have to change in the way they, uh, they approach content. So we're obviously here to talk Shelf Master. Um, say I was a large brand trying to optimize you know, my sales across all the different digital channels as we've been discussing. What might my journey with Shelf Master look like? 
Well, it starts with the foundation. Um, I think what's missing uh, in, in, in current business is that many organizations are organized uh, in the traditional way, is having great uh, products that they sell through great retailers. But now, customers shopping online, they're not looking to buy uh, uh, just simply products from the shelf anymore. They want to have pictures, they want to have videos, they want to uh, have more products uh, that, that are uh, usable together. They want to learn from how-to videos and stuff like that. Um, so it's important for customers to know exactly the requirements that consumers are having. So what we always say is start with a strong foundation layer and, and create a very good uh, data model and content model so that there's one single uh, foundation of content available um, and then we can map that to each and every endpoint and endpoint is a shopping channel where a consumer does a purchase um, and that foundation layer we call the blueprint and that blueprint uh, is actually a scalable way uh, to start maybe small in, in a small initiative but really expand that throughout your organization uh, and, and that would be the first step and then we stack the shelves, right? We, we, we get that content out to consumers and uh, we get that content out to your most important retail uh, or marketplace partners. Uh, and once we do that, consumers are starting to interact with your brand on a more consistent and a high, high quality way. Uh, and, and that stack is really a place where, where you already are going to see a lot of benefit from rise in sales or shorter time to market. Um, and reload is, is the business as usual as we, we would like to see it. Start restacking your shelves, reloading content on a daily basis. Uh, we see all the times that once you've published content about your products, that the content stays the same for all the time. But the consumer habits are changing. Uh, they are always demanding more information, especially about the products that they love. Um, so therefore you have to reload all the content um, at any given time and refresh them with better and uh, optimized uh, experiences. So sticking with the idea that I'm this large brand coming to you, how's my brand going to benefit from using Shelfmaster? Well, there's a couple of big benefits that we've seen in earlier conversations with clients, um, especially uh, if you look, for instance, in that grocery example, we've been working for a big uh, global food manufacturer. And after the first year of interacting with Shelfmaster, they already have seen a 10% rise in online revenue as a, as, as a, as a direct related result of improving that, uh, that customer experience by better content. And also there's an indirect value that you can uh, clearly get. Um, an average brand manufacturer needs, to uh, needs two months or three months of work before new products can be uh, stacked to shelves. Imagine how much value you can get if you can uh, close that gap and shorten that time to market to hours or days. Um, that's a lot of uh, indirect value that you can get. Um, imagine how, uh, how uh, people can work more efficiently um, and uh, how much more money you can make uh, with extra selling time uh, instead of working time. Final question. I mean, this all sounds fantastic, but assume I have lots of multiple brands and products. Where do I start? I will always say start small. Start, start uh, with your own organization uh, and see that it's a cultural change for you to be uh, managing your digital shelves, right? P people are so busy working in their processes uh, and the culture change is about looking at output, output rather than uh, dull and tedious work. Um, so I would say start there um, and, and then maybe you can uh, talk to independent service providers who have done this for other brands and retailers in your field as well. Um, and, and yeah, last but not least, it's a people, tools and processes exercise, right? So if people are happy and supported by technology, then the process can be speed up and, uh, and optimized. Um, so that would be my advice. Dennis, thank you so much for coming and chatting Shelfmaster with us. Thank you.